So oftentimes when I talk about flies, people immediately think of house flies and mosquitoes and all of these other pests in our day-to-day -day lives. But flies come in a variety of shapes and sizes, and they can be more important than you think. Welcome to the Insect Spotlight Project, a channel dedicated to shining a light on insects, spiders, and any other creepy crawlies that get left out of the ecologic spotlight. So today we're talking about the order Diptera, better known as the flies. Now, we tend to call a lot of things flies that are not actually flies. Fireflies, for example, are beetles, not flies. Dragonflies are dragonflies in the order Odonata, not in the order Diptera. But lucky for us, flies are pretty easy to tell apart from other orders. Now, most insects have four wings, or two pairs of wings, and flies technically do too but they have their two functional wings, the forewings, and their hind wings have been heavily reduced into these small structures called haltiers. Haltiers do serve a very important function for the fly. They act as gyroscopes, which help orient the fly in flight as a pair of balancing organs. Now, this is part of why flies are able to maneuver so well in the air, and why they can be so hard for us to catch. And this lack of hind wings is actually what gives the order Diptera its name. Di means two, and Terra means wing. So Diptera means two wings. Another trait of Diptera is the adults all have some sort of mouth part adapted for a liquid diet, whether that be the sponging mouth parts of the housefly or the piercing sucking mouth parts of the mosquito. However, you shouldn't use just the mouth parts to identify a fly, as many other orders can have mouth parts also adapted to a liquid diet. I mean, some adult flies just don't even have mouth parts at all. Because of this, the haltiers are still the best way to identify Diptera from other insect orders. And this is incredibly helpful because a lot of flies can mimic other insects. So remember to count the wings. So just like the beetles and butterflies we've talked about in other videos, flies are also holometabolous. So they have a four-stage metamorphosis from egg to larvae to pupae to adult. Fly larvae often look very simplistic and can look more like worms than anything else. You may have heard them referred to as maggots. Now, often when we think of maggots and fly larvae, we tend to think of roadkill and other filthy environments, but they can be found in a wide variety of habitats, from aquatic systems to free living on foliage, and in a very special case, they can be found in tar pits. And this wide variety of ecologic environments makes them pretty important critters. One of their more well-known functions is their roles as detritivores. Flies are incredible in their abilities to break down large amounts of waste, such as carcasses and dung, rotting plant matter, etc. And without them, a lot of these things could start piling up in the environment and spreading disease and also just being a general nuisance for all involved. But did you know that flies can also pollinate? Perhaps the most famous group of fly pollinators is the Surfidae, or the aptly named flower flies. Now, although they can look like bees and wasps, they cannot sting, so they're totally harmless to humans. They just go about their day collecting nectar and pollen, and consequently doing some pollination along the way. Surfidae larvae play a little bit of a different role, as they're important predators of aphids and other agricultural pests. And this is not unique to the larvae of Surfidae. Other flies, such as robber flies and long-legged flies, can also be important predators of pests that plague our crops. Some flies are even parasitic, laying their eggs inside of other insects so their developing larvae can feed on their insides. Uh, and we call these things parasitoids, and they are also critical to our agricultural systems. Many flies also have aquatic larvae and make up a critical part of aquatic food webs. They can feed on sunken leaf litter and filter out small particles from the water and turn it into really high quality insect protein. 
and this can feed fish populations and other insect predators. Flies have also been critical to genetic research. Their easy rearing and short development time have led to some major breakthroughs in genetic innovation. I mean, you can probably find Drosophila fruit flies in nearly any biological textbook. So let's talk about now when flies are not as helpful to humans. Well, for one, they can be transmitters of some really nasty diseases. Mosquitoes are the deadliest animals on Earth, killing an estimated 1 million people every year through their transmission of diseases such as malaria and Zika, yellow fever, etc. But they're actually not the only dipterin culprits. Other flies spread diseases through blood feeding as well, such as tsetse flies, sand flies, and black flies. And in addition to that, there are some flies and household pests that can spread disease through contact with our food. Flies can also just be annoying. I'm sure many of us have memories of warm summer days with gnats flying into our eyes and ears, or scrambling around trying to catch that one fly that made its way into your kitchen, or constantly swatting away flies from your food when you're eating outside. And we're not even yet mentioning the damage they do to agriculture. One dipterin pest, the spotted wing Drosophila, made its way over from Southeast Asia to the United States in 2008. And now it causes upwards of $500 million in agricultural damage every year. However, we can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. Dipterins get a really bad rep. And that's pretty well justified for some members of this order. However, it's important we don't generalize all of them as pests, as many species are incredibly beneficial to our ecosystems and even directly beneficial to human agriculture. So let's give them some credit where credit is due. So here are some ways you can help foster beneficial dipterins on your land and also some ways you can help keep the mosquitoes at bay. As we've talked about in nearly every other video, the planting of native plants is critical to the fostering of healthy insect populations, and flies are no different. Many predatory and parasitic flies that are really beneficial to human agriculture rely on floral resources in their adult stage. So the planting of native flowers can be great to really foster those populations. Another neat way you can interact mutualistically with flies on your property is through composting. Now, I know not everybody wants flies in their compost bin, and that's okay, I don't judge. However, these tiny fruit flies that you see flying around your compost can actually be really beneficial in helping to break down the organic matter in your compost bin. And if you're okay with keeping them around, the adult fruit flies also provide a little snack for other insect predators in your area, such as spiders and wasps. As we talked about, not all flies are as warmly welcomed by humans, and I'm certainly not going to tell anybody they should be fostering mosquitoes on their property. Although mosquitoes can serve an important function in aquatic and terrestrial systems as a food resource, they still pose a real threat and nuisance to us. So taking precautions to keep them off your property is totally reasonable and frankly encouraged. One of the best ways you can keep the mosquitoes at bay on your property is to remove any pools of standing water that may collect after rains. Even something as simple as an old tire in the backyard that's filled with a little water can be a breeding ground for mosquitoes. So for the sake of yourself and your neighbors, please dump those pools of standing water. So remember, the dipterins are the flies. They're characterized by their single pair of wings, and as a result, their reduced hind wings, called haltiers. They are holometabolists, having a four-stage metamorphosis, and they have mouthparts adapted for a liquid diet, whether that be piercing, sucking, lapping, etc. They're critically important to our environments as detritivores, as well as pollinators, predators and parasitoids, and more. They can be found in both aquatic and terrestrial habitats as larvae, and fill a wide range of ecological niches. They can also be quite detrimental to humans, especially through disease spread, but also as agricultural pests. However, you can help propagate beneficial populations of flies 
through the planting of native plants, especially native flowers, and maybe even some composting. And remember to dump those standing water pools so you don't flood your area with mosquitoes. Thank you all so much for listening, and I will see you all next time with a new order. Peace.